All right, good morning, um, Facebook and all of our friends who've been joining us. I'm Courtney Nagel, I'm the Associate Marketing Manager at the NFCC and I'm joined by Bruce McClary. He's our VP of Communications and in-house expert. Um, good morning, Bruce, how's it going? Good morning, Courtney, it's going great. Uh, we are moving quickly through the month of July. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, I mean, it's hard to believe that it's already July. <laughs> it's, yeah, isn't it though? It's, it's crazy. Uh, um, I don't know if it's a good thing the year is moving so quickly or a bad thing. I don't know. It's, it depends on what's down the road, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it feels like we're doing a lot. So we're mm -hmm. getting things done as the time progresses. So, um, so we're going to jump right into the topic today. We're talking about COVID-19 scams and understanding how to protect yourself and the first question is, what's the difference between a ripoff and a scam? Yeah, and that's a really good question. I had a great podcast on the Finbit podcast over on Spotify, and I was talking to Herb Weisbaum, consumer advocate, and he really spelled it out pretty clearly. And I guess I'll just repeat some of the things that he said. The difference between a, a scam and a ripoff, uh, a ripoff is when you order uh, a product or you try you pay for a service that doesn't exactly deliver to expectations. Maybe uh, the product is faulty or the product, uh, the name brand product was substituted with some other uh, flimsy, less than adequate product. That's a ripoff. So that's, they're not, the, they're just giving you something that's shoddy that doesn't really uh, do what it's supposed to. The a scam is when uh, you're being sold something that either doesn't exist or it is, again, it's a shoddy product, it's a fake product, but the ultimate goal of the scammer is not about the product, it's about what information they can get from you uh, to get access to your money, to get access to your personal finances, uh, to hurt you financially. So that's a scam. And that it's really important to know the difference. I mean, a ripoff, that's a consumer product issue. Uh, you know, not necessarily, it's bad, but it's not necessarily as dangerous as a scam. Uh, a scam can drain you dry. Yeah. So ripoffs is kind of like one time, one off things that you get. Yeah. Just a, a minor consumer off. issue. You're not going to lose all your money, hopefully. Uh, and, right. You know, but, but with a scam, they're out for your money. And they're going to okay. try to get access to your bank account, your credit cards, uh, and drain you dry so fast uh, that you can't react in time. And that's their hope. Yeah. So what new scams do consumers need to know about due to COVID-19? I know there's been a ton popping up. Yeah. And it, it's not necessarily that they're reaching people differently. Everybody talks about, oh, we've moved to digital. So, you know, it's, you know, all the look out online and look out for tech scams and things like that. I think they're still, the scammers are still using their old bag of tricks and they're even going back to postal mail uh, delivery now during the coronavirus because so many people are at home, they're getting their mail, they're reading it. But the some of the scams uh, that are COVID specific that are still continuing have to do with uh, the stimulus check. Uh, there's text message scams out there that are asking people to click on a link to get to provide information so they can get their second stimulus check. Uh, and the information that you have to provide, not surprisingly, is your bank account information, social security, credit card, et cetera. Don't click that link. Uh, that's the main thing. If, if there are other scams out there that are still going on that are related to PPE. Uh, so if you want to get face masks or if you want to get uh, testing kits, there's a testing kit scam out there right now. Uh, that's a robocall that's offering free testing kits now. And you may be thinking, oh, wow, that's not a scam. They're offering something for free. But if you accept the testing kit, you have to press one and then it takes you over to somebody who's going to ask you a lot of questions. Oh, to process this order, we need this information about you. Can you please confirm? And that's where you get hooked. There are work from home scams. So many people, millions are out of work right now and they're struggling and they're on unemployment. The economy, it's uncertain whether some states are going to fully reopen or if they're going to move back and businesses are going to shut down. So people are attracted to those. It sounds great. There's a robocall right now that's going out that's offering work from home jobs at Amazon.com. Uh, so mm -hmm. you just press one, you give them your information and you think you've got a job. Uh, well, you've, you've been ripped off. So I'm just going to play a little uh, snippet of one of the scams. And actually, this will be the uh, this will be the work from home scam. Hello, this is a 
courtesy invitation to work with Amazon from home and make up to $400 in a day. Open enrollment has begun for the Amazon Associate Program. The program allows you to partner with Amazon and share in their success. As a well, that's about all I'm going to play from that. It goes on and on, but then it gives you the option to press one and give them your information, and then you get a job. Don't that get a job. is terrible. It's like kicking people while they're down. Like, Yeah, it is. And the test kit thing is disturbing, too, because you think about it. If somebody actually has coronavirus and they get one of these fake test kits and the test kit gives them a negative response, uh, that person may think they're free and clear, but they may go out and infect other people. Uh, this is sick stuff. Uh, and the people that are being scammed with this, uh, they're, they are actually receiving fake test kits. In fact, somebody set up a fake testing site uh, where people would pull up and they were just using regular swabs, but they were asking people to slide their credit card before they were offering the tests. I think this was uh, in South Carolina or Georgia, somewhere uh, in the Southeast. Uh, you know, Fortunately, that scam got busted. They showed up on site and they were uh, getting people's credit card information. Uh, but it's really hard to catch these uh, these people that are online and and doing the and sending the text messages. But just yeah. be vigilant. That's the main thing. Yeah. So, what are your best tips for how consumers can protect themselves? Yeah. Never take anybody at their word when they're offering something, especially if it's a robocall. Just don't respond. One thing you can do to verify if it is actually a call coming from one of these organizations that that. Uh, is claiming to be represented in the message is to go online, look up the actual contact information for that company or uh, organization and call their main number and ask them if this message is actually them. Uh, chances are if it's a robocall and it's coming from an agency that's saying that they're part of the government, it's not the actual government. The government is never going to robocall you, period. They're never going to offer send a text message offering uh, your stimulus check if you give them information. So those are just outright scams. They are not going to be reaching out to you. The IRS is not going to be calling you up, uh, telling you to enter information to get a uh, to get a check. Uh, the Department of Labor isn't going to be calling you up. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and and again, even if the number says it's uh, it comes up on your caller ID as a certain company or organization, people are spoofing numbers all the time, and even in text messages. So don't believe what you're seeing until you can verify it by some other way, other than responding directly to the message. The worst thing you can do is respond directly to these things because then they know there's a real person on the other end, and there's information that they can get from that real person, and they'll keep trying. Yeah, uh, I even the, mm -hmm. I had a phone call last week, and it was like my um, from based on the number my phone knew it said possible spam underneath, like calling me. So I thought that was interesting how they're flagging it. Yeah, uh, but again, I mean, people are spoofing numbers, so I mean, it could be related to a spoof. But uh, yeah, the main thing is and report these scammers. So if you know that if you if you feel pretty certain that what you're the, the communication you're getting is a scam. Report it to your local authorities and report it to the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission keeps a database. That recording I played comes right from the FTC scam database. And uh, it helps them identify and track down these scammers uh, and, and put these criminals behind bars. So there was a new protection that was put in place. Was it this week or last week to protect consumers from robocalls? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, the this the Supreme Court's been busy <laughs> recently, and there's a lot of activity going on right now. And some of it, it was related to debt collection laws. And there was a loophole in the debt collection laws that actually allowed, uh, or an exception, I should say, there was an exception in the debt collection laws that allowed uh, federal debt to be collected via robocall. And this has been going on for some time. So legitimate debt collection activity from the federal government was taking place via robocall. Uh, that has actually been shut down by this latest ruling. So now uh, your federal student loan debts, uh, your uh, VA loans, uh, any kind of loans that are backed by the federal government, uh, if they are in debt collection, uh, the collection activity cannot take place uh, via robocall going forward. Uh, but that does not mean that you don't owe the debt anymore and that debt collection is going to stop. It just means that they have to reach you uh, in different ways. And if you really want to know more about how they can legally collect the debt, 
it's probably a good idea to look up the information on the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FDCPA. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of <laughs> alphabet soup. And that's uh, that can tell you when a debt collector can call, what hours, et cetera. And uh, you know exactly how they can get in touch with you. But again, uh, this goes back to the whole issue of scams, though. Scammers love to use robocalls. Uh, so going forward, if you get debt collection calls that are robocalls and they're uh, saying that they're attempting to collect a, a, a debt that you owe, if it's a federally backed loan, like your student loans, your uh, VA, uh, VHDA, uh, just remember that uh, that that is no longer allowed. So if you're getting a robocall, it could be a scam. Uh, but it's always good, again, to go back to that rule that I mentioned before. If you're, if, you, if you're not sure, use a different way to verify that that call is authentic by looking up the number of the, uh, of the lender, looking up the number of the collection agency, calling that, and then verifying whether or not they're trying to collect the debt. So, yeah, but very important. I just, I'm always suspicious of any robocall, <laughs> any robocall. Yeah. There's not a person to talk to. Uh, that's, that's a red flag. And even when there is a person to talk to, I'm suspicious. I'm just naturally suspicious these days. Yeah, you're very skeptical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's the news. So, uh, you know, that's a win for consumers. It's just one less robocall people are going to be getting. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's also uh, an opportunity to, uh, to protect consumers from uh, possible robocall scams that are trying to duplicate the, uh, the activity of, of debt collectors. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. We I did post a link in the comments to our latest blog on COVID-19 scams. So be sure to check that out for more information. Um, we'll be back again next week with more tips for you and keeping your money safe. Um, but thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody.